Hello, Data Talks family. Uh, the astute amongst you will have already recognized that I'm not Nate. Nate's doing fine. He's busy working on other uh, new projects, developing those, which are pretty exciting. Looking forward to getting those out. My name is Paul. I'm the editor for Data Talks, and I'm just jumping in here to provide a little bit more coverage for exercises for the tutorials. So Nate did a tutorial called Combining Data Frames, and this exercise corresponds with that. You can get to this through Nate's GitHub repo. And so that's where you are. Um, let's go ahead and just jump in quickly and get things started. We are running through this cold, so there can and will be mistakes, which hopefully will be entertaining. Also, there's more than one way to do the things that I'm gonna walk through here. This is just my approach. It might be helpful for some of you. Speaking of which, if it is, please like or subscribe uh, or leave a comment, it really does help. So step one, import the necessary libraries. Well, it's hard to know what's necessary before we do the exercise, but let's just take a guess. Import NumPy as MP, import pandas as PD. Okay, so let's run that. So far, so good. Import the first data set, cars one and cars two. I guess it should be first data sets, cars one and cars two. Assign each to a variable car called cars one and cars two. I don't know why those would be separate steps. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like this. Cars one equals PD read CSV cars. That's it, that's the one I want. Let's copy that. And then cars two, cars two. Looks good to me, let's run that. Hey, we are three-eighths of the way done already. Step four, ops, it appears our first <laughs> data set has some unnamed blank columns, fix cars one, unnamed blank columns. Cars one, head, sure enough, one, two, five, huh? And they're, they're full of NANs. I see NANs on the screen. Let's double check that. Cars one, unnamed. Let's just go with the first one, nine, and then um, call value counts on it. And I want to see these NANs, so uh, drop in A, right? Equals false. You do have to spell it correctly. Let's run that. Uh, all NANs. Okay, let's do another spot check. All NANs. And finally, let's check 13, which is the last one. All NANs. So I didn't check two of them, but it does say they're blank columns. So let's assume they're all blank. We need to fix it. Let's take a look at cars 2, given that we're working on a concatenation merge type deal exercises. Okay, they're just not here. So I think fixing cars one means getting rid of those blank unnamed columns that are full of NANs, which by the way, this is starting to feel like real life. I mean, why wouldn't you make a data set with unnamed blank columns? I, I don't know why you wouldn't. It, again, it feels exactly like what you get when you're actually working. So cars one, let's, uh, there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm thinking of just using a caveman method, cars one, columns and I want to drop these command C so let's take it and call drop and I like this one here lately columns equals and then just give it the list it seems really clear and explicit you can also specify axis but I like this one better a little bit better whatever gets the job done cars one I want to take a peek at this after we do this oh you know what uh, we better do in place. Good. This has the in place argument uh, equals true. Otherwise, it's going to feel like it's not doing anything. Car one. And you know what? It probably already dropped them. It's probably going to give me another error now. Yep. Hey, they're not there to drop. I found an axis. Okay. So they've already been dropped. And let's just go below and do uh, cars one head. Okay, so what happened there, folks, if you're wondering, is I ran this cell, it ran this fine, and then I called car one, I think, head, and there was no car one, so it gave me an error on that. 
Then I fixed it, fixed it to cars one head and reran the cell, but by then this one had already run, the, the first part had, and it said, hey, I can't drop these, they're not in the access. So I just made that really look hard and it couldn't be simpler. So cars one now looks good. We don't have those idiotic unnamed empty columns. They say the mark of a professional is he or she makes it look easy. I made that look hard, so draw your own conclusions. What is the number of observations in each data set? Well, that's not too difficult. Let's do a uh, print here. Do F statement. The uh, number of observations in cars one is, and then uh, Lynn cars one. That's it. Let's copy this and rinse and repeat. But change this to two and this one to two. Not 12, two. Okay, 198 and 200. So they do not have the same length. But our columns are the same, so we're probably not going to be concatenating them um, column wise. Step six join cars one and cars two into a single data frame called cars. Okay, well, let's see here. I didn't actually check to see if all of those column names were the same. Let's check that real quick without doing it visually. I need to call all cars one columns equals equals cars two columns. Good, it ran. And it didn't throw a flag, so they're equal. So um, cars equals PD concat. Anytime you can get out of the visual inspection game, guys, get out of the visual inspection game. This assert statement saved me from having to triple check everything. Is there a space somewhere? All of that nonsense. And I don't want to do that concat. I want to do a concat with the variables cars one and uh, cars two. And I really don't think I need to explicitly call the axis here, but let's check. Um, I don't think I need any of the other stuff other than let's just be explicit with axis equals zero, which means we're going to just stack them one on top of the other. And then while we're at it, let's call cars head just to see what we did. Head doesn't really give me the information I was looking for other than we don't have a whole bunch more columns. So it did concatenate in the right, the intended direction. Cars dot shape. 398 by nine. So 398 is 200 plus 198. I like it. Step seven, ops. <laughs> ops, there's a column missing called owners. Create a random number series between 15,000 and 73,000. Step eight is add a column owners to cars. Okay, so I think I know where this is going. This is a two-step process in this, to, in this particular exercise. So let's make a variable called owners or an object. Owners needs to be, okay, between 15,000 and 73,000. How about we call np random rand int and low, high, size. This is perfect. Woo, sometimes I look like I know what I'm doing. 15,000. First number is inclusive. I'll bet you the last number is not. 73,001, and then size equals 398, which we can see right there on the screen. I don't want it to say and, and then let's do uh, Lynn owners, just to be sure it worked how I thought. Good. Now, add column owners to cars. I sure hope all this is recording. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do this again. Uh, I never checked cars. Find and to check or think about is right in the end, right? Cars owners equals owners. So this is the uh, object we just created up here. We're assigning this probably NumPy array. <laughs> and they did say to make a series, whatever. This We're going to assign this NumPy array to the value owners. And then let's uh, take a look at cars um, head. Let's see what we did. All right. So find this improbable. There's 43,000 AMC Rebel SSTs. 
Right, obviously, that was a made-up number. But we have an owner's column, and the range is consistent with the one we specified, greater than 15,000, lower than 73,000. I'm going to call that mission accomplished. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Again, I can't stress enough. If it was, can you please click like and or leave a comment? Uh, we're not monetizing the channel. We don't get any money out of this. We're doing this to give back to the community that's so richly uh, rewarded us. And so those little things help. And they also help us know if we're on the right track. Because if nobody's really valuing these exercise videos, then we'll stop making them. There's no reason to if they're not a big deal. So, which is fine if they're not. You know, we're not throwing a temper tantrum. It's not going to invest time or energy into things that people aren't liking or commenting on because we don't know then if, if anybody's finding value. So anyway, hope this uh, worked for you. Again, there's more than one way to do all the things that I did, but this is my approach, and I trust that it provided some help to somebody. Thanks and bye.